children were creating in the EPAM Teaches project, in, in some of the schools through the high tech part project. I saw a great variety of things children were working on, and that made me feel happy because it, it was an indicator that children would work on things they were passionate about, and therefore they'd be willing to work longer and harder and learn more in the process. We also know that it's important to let people interact with peers as part of the learning process, meaning interact with other people. Because most of the best learning we do happens when we're, work, when we're working with other people. I think it's a real mistake that sometimes when, they, when people think about thinking, they imagine that sculpture by the great artist Rodin, the thinker, and the thinker is just sitting by himself. But that's not a very good representation of thinking. I think that sculpture gives us the wrong idea. Most thinking doesn't happen just sitting there by yourself. Most thinking happens in collaboration with others. So we made Scratch so that people could learn with and from others. Scratch was the first programming language that came with an online community. Because we saw from the beginning it was important for children to be able to share their projects with others so they could get encouragement and feedback the way the Ipsy did. Also, with the online community, you can get inspiration from others. You know, every day there are tens of thousands of new projects that are posted to the online community. So there's a constant source of new inspiration. Children can see what other children or other children have created, and they might remix that project or get an idea for their own project. So we wanted to create Scratch to make it easy for people to work together and to learn with and from one another. Finally, the fourth guiding principle is play. And I sometimes say that play is the most misunderstood of the four Ps. Because sometimes when people hear play, they just think about laughter and having fun. And there's nothing wrong with laughter and having fun, but that's not what we mean by play. When we think about play, we mean a type of approach to the world where you're constantly experimenting and trying new things and taking risks. And we think that the best learning happens when you have that playful approach or that playful attitude where you're constantly experimenting, testing the boundaries, and trying new things. So we designed Scratch so it's easy for people to keep on trying new things, experimenting. And there aren't, you know, big, uh, there, it's okay to make mistakes in Scratch. So we've made it so that if you make a mistake, you can just take the blocks apart and put them together in a new way. It's easy to keep trying new things. So when we run Scratch workshops, we encourage children to experiment, to try things. If something goes wrong, that's not an indication that they don't understand something. It's more of an opportunity to learn something new. So we always try to see mistakes as an opportunity to learn new things. So we design Scratch that way, and we run workshops to encourage children to try new things. It's okay if things go wrong. That's the way we do our own work. That we, as we're developing things in our lab at MIT, we're constantly experimenting, trying new things, and it's okay when things go wrong, we learn from our mistakes. So as we develop Scratch, we, our goal was really to provide opportunities for children to work on projects based on their passions, in collaboration with peers, in a playful spirit. And I think that's both the reason for Scratch's success and the reason why kids like Scratch so much is because it's based on these four guiding principles. And I think these guiding principles are good principles not just for designing a programming language, but also good educational principles as you're developing lesson plans for your classroom or your workshop. I'd encourage you to develop lesson plans where you're engaging kids and work on projects based on their passions and collaboration with their peers in a playful spirit. Let me give one more example of a child working on a project with Scratch where we were making use of these four Ps. So this is a project that I saw in one of the after-school centers that we work with. This is, we developed these after-school centers called computer clubhouses 
where children from low-income communities come to learn how to express themselves creatively with new technologies. And I went to one of the clubhouses in Los Angeles, and there was a child working on a project somewhat like this. It wasn't this exact project. It was a project like this. And it was a project where I could control the fish to eat little fish. I'm not very good there. Just... So I could move the big fish to eat little fish. So uh, I saw the boy who was right, who was creating this project, and he was very proud of the project, and I thought it was a really interesting project. And, but he was feeling a little bit frustrated when I met him, because although he liked his game, he wanted the game to keep score, and he didn't know how to keep score. So I showed him a way to keep score in Scratch. I showed him that there's a part of Scratch called a variable. And I showed him that you can make a variable, and you can type in the word score, and you get new blocks to set the score and change the score. And I showed him the block that said change score by one, and he immediately saw how he could use this in his program. Because this is the script where the big fish is the little fish. So he added that there, and then every time the big fish eats the little fish, the score goes up by one. Now the score is two and three. So he saw this was working, he was so happy, he reached out his hand to me, and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I thought, and I wondered, how often do algebra teachers get thanked by their students for teaching the variables? And that doesn't happen very often. And I think it's because when children learn about variables in algebra class, they oftentimes don't see the purpose of it. So why would they thank the teacher? Because it's not something that they're so excited about learning. But here, he saw how he could make use of variables. And he continued to do other projects using variables. And when I asked his teacher about it, actually, they've already learned about variables in the classroom. But I think he wasn't paying attention because he didn't see the purpose of it. But once he learned it in Scratch, he kept on using it and using it in more sophisticated ways. 